Servus, moin and hello friends. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Twitter productively. You know that Twitter kind of has a reputation for being this unwelcoming hellhole of a website that's a total uh, time waster, but that's because most people just use it wrong. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make Twitter an actually productive part of your day. The thing that most people just get wrong about Twitter is that they use it to follow some celebrity, uh, some politicians, or just like news organizations. Um, and then they reply to their tweets and like take part in the drama of uh, celebrity culture or politics or what have you. And you don't have to do that. And if you don't, and if you find ways to steer away from all that admittedly very toxic mess, uh, Twitter can be an incredibly productive, generative, and um, nicely social place on the internet. So let me explain to you how that works. And you can get there by following four steps, really. The first one is to mute certain words, right? And we're going to go into that in just a second. But the first thing is mute political terms, um, words that might just annoy you, rile you up. Um, and without going into specifics, I'm sure you can come up with a number of words that just don't um, make you have a happy day and that you just don't want to see because you know it, it's going to get an emotional rise out of you or it's associated with political positions that aren't really helpful and they just get a rise out of you, right? For example, from uh, from my perspective, I'm in Europe, I'm in Germany, and I really don't want to spend all my time on Twitter um, kind of taking in the political battles in the United States, right? United States, beautiful place, love the people there, um, but the politics, I never can completely get around them, but um, I don't want to have that part of my day every day, right? So I have a whole list of terms muted that are associated with uh, US politics, right? So I don't see them even at all. The second thing to do is to use Twitter lists. So instead of just having your normal timeline, um, what you do is you create lists of people that tweet about a certain topic, right? So for me, that would be um, personal knowledge management, for example, or tools for thought, or history, or uh, whatever else comes to your mind, right? Like topics you're interested in. And you'll create these Twitter lists um, and add people to them that tweet for that topic. The third thing to do is to not use the main Twitter interface, but to use TweetDeck which is an app that Twitter provides itself um, and that lets you really capitalize on using lists and searches and that sort of thing to, to shape your experience of the platform. That's not just that algorithmically generated list in your main feed. And the fourth and final thing is to never use Twitter on your phone. So on the phone, you have mainly access to the main timeline and whatever gets put in there, you have to read, right? Um, and for me personally, my phone is kind of the thing that where I, I don't want notifications, I don't want anything. It's like I call friends with it, I surf when I'm on, on, the, on the bus or something, but I don't do social media on the phone, right? Because I know if I do that, I will spend the first hour in bed just scrolling through my feed. So I don't have any social media on my phone. And for Twitter in particular, that's not going on there. I've tried that multiple times, never works. Keep it off your phone. And so those are the three, four, uh, the four things to, to do for making Twitter productive. 
But because I don't want this to be just a video where I quickly rattle off these, these four things, what we're going to do is that I'm going to show you how to set these up uh, in detail. So we're going to jump into the Twitter app um, on the web and I'll show you how to mute certain words, how to create lists, how to set up TweetDeck, and well, I won't show you how not to install Twitter on your phone because you can do that on your own. Just uninstall it. Um, I think that makes sense. So if that sounds interesting, let's get into it. And um, here we are in the app. All right, so here we are in Twitter's web interface. And as I was saying, the first thing you want to set up is muted words, right? You want to remove words that you don't care about. For me, US politics mostly. And we already have the perfect example here on the timeline. It's about uh, POTUS and uh, whatever, and I don't want to see it. I don't care about the US president at this point in time. So what we're going to do is we're going to head to the more section in your left timeline. And there we're going to add um, a mute word for POTUS in the settings and privacy, privacy and safety, and then mute and block sections. And here I'm going to uh, go to muted words. As you see, um, loads of uh, US uh, politics uh, terms, don't want to see them. And we're going to add POTUS um, to that list. So I'm going to um, save this in a second. I can mute words from the home timeline uh, and from my notifications. I can mute them from um, anyone and that's what I want to do um, or from people I don't follow so that people can't use these words in replies to you if um, you don't follow them. Uh, that can be great um, if people just randomly spam you with um, unsavory stuff and you can um, mute them for specific durations, either until you unmute it. So basically forever, 24 hours, seven days, 30 days, I usually do it forever. So click save, now head home. Um, and after a refresh, ta-da, the tweet about uh, POTUS doesn't show up anymore, right? Very easy. Um, that is how you mute, mute words from your Twitter timeline. First step for a nice Twitter experience. The second one is to create lists. And so let's do that. We do this by, again, going to the more section and then to lists at the very top. These are all the lists that I have. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new list in the upper right. And so um, click that button there, create a new list. We're going to call this uh, PKM2 because I already have one for PKM, personal knowledge management. And I'm going to make this list private. And the reason to make it private is um, in that case, people don't get notified when you add them to these lists and people can't follow these lists, right? If it's a non-private list, you could go to my Twitter profile and see the lists I've created and then you could also follow that list I've made. I like to keep my lists private, sort people on them and, and do whatever without making any sort of fuss about this. Um, so that's why I usually make them private and then go to next. And here you can um, add, or you can see members on the left suggested, here's where you can search people. So let's take uh, Tiago, for example, add him here. Um, then we're going to use Ali Abdal. Um, and now I have two uh, people on that list. And now I see tweets from uh, Ali and Tiago on this list, right? And I don't see any other tweets. So if I'm interested in PKM, put some people on these lists and that's how I see them. I can also um, add people by going to their profile, for example. So um, TFT hacker, for example, 
And um, when I'm on that profile page, I click on more and then I add him to lists and I'm going to add him to the PKM2 list, click save. And now if I go to that list, I'm going to see his tweets as well. For those to access these lists, again, you go to more and then to lists in the top. And here's where you can then browse through your lists um, and look at what the people on them are tweeting. So where's the newest TFT hacker tweet? Uh, a bit down. Um, right, so that's the second way adding people to lists and that way sorting people um, on your timeline or getting them also out of your timeline kind of because you don't have to follow the people that you put on lists, right? And the third way is to use a tweet deck. Tweet deck is a web app from Twitter that takes this whole list management thing like filtering stuff to a whole new level. So let's head over to tweet deck, tweetdeck.twitter.com. This is the uh, old interface. And what we actually want to have is the new preview of the new interface because that is much more powerful. And that at this point, if TweetDeck does not prompt you um, for this, then it is a little bit uh, hacky, but um, it works. So let me show you what you have uh, to do. So what you have to do is you go to view and then developer and show um, the developer tools. Um, the shortcut for this um, here is um, Alt, Command and I on the Mac. I think on Windows it's uh, Control, Shift, I or something, but through the menu you can you can figure out how to, to get there. So you click that and then you go to the console and on the console you paste the following, right? Document.cookie equals and then um, quotes tweet deck underscore version equals beta and closing uh, quotes. And then you hit enter. And if we reload this page now, boom, we have a completely different interface. And that's really cool because um, this interface is much nicer. Um, you have here on the left, you have multiple decks and decks are collections of columns. And these columns are extremely uh, powerful because here you can kind of save searches for certain tweets. So on the very left here, for example, this is my search for PKM. And here you see that I'm searching for the contents or the tweets that come from people who are on a certain list, right? So here from the PKM2 list that we created, in the URL bar at the very top, you see this long number, right? You copy this, you create a new column um, and say um, which list you want to have. And this is new actually. Um, you don't even uh, need to do that. Um, copying hack, you just scroll through your lists. Is that everything? Yes. Um, select the PKM2 list and now it searches um, for that for that list, for tweets from people on that list. But what you can also do is that you can um, modify this, right? You can say, okay, I want um, replies or tweets that have more than um, one reply, right? Or more than five likes. So let's say I want to have more than five likes. And so the tweet that was just up here from Tiago on it's not your job to work more that is going to go away because as you see here at the moment of this recording this tweet only has five likes so more than five likes and um, 
I also don't want to see any replies or whatever. I just want to see original tweets. And so there's different options here. Um, and I can also say um, I want to see a certain language, right? So I want to see only English tweets uh, for this example. And so this way you can put together a really nice collection of topics and people to follow without having like an endless stream um, in your timeline. And you can tailor it really specifically to certain interests and levels of signal, right? So if you are interested in like the top tweets, um, on a certain topic or from certain people, then you will only see those compared to the, again, endless stream on your timeline. So to sum up, um, four things to do to make Twitter productive. One, um, you want to mute certain words that just get a rise out of you that make you angry. Um, two, you want to put people on lists so that you have like really narrow thematic um, focus on certain things. Three, you want to use a tweet deck interface because with that you can be even more specific in the way you tailor your input experience. And number four, you don't want Twitter on your phone because that's going to be only with the endless timeline um, and that's going to waste a lot of time. Um, whereas with a tweet deck, you can kind of jump in, see anything new on the certain topics. No, okay, close it. And it's not like that constant uh, dopamine um, mill of, of your, your main timeline. And so if you found that interesting and want to see my latest video, I'm going to link to that here. And um, again, hope this was useful and talk to you in the next one. Bye.